Uh, hello, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I had to restart my computer. Uh, apparently, that's still necessary in 2017. Okay, so my name is Paulus, and I'm here to present a talk about creating, dating, moting, mobile. mobile. Um, before I start, a uh, warning, or not a warning, maybe just a note. Um, I'm going to be mostly uh, doing a demo today. And uh, because the demo requires some concentration, I would like to take questions at the end of the presentation. Um, but I'm going to try to um, leave time for the presentation at the end. Um, cool, I think we can get started. Um, it would be great if you can put on my screen. Okay. All good? Okay. So can you can you guys see my uh, my slides? Yeah, we can. You're good. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, I want to talk about mobile applications today and I want to get started with a quote from Brad Victor, uh, and the quote reads, creators need an immediate connection to what they create. Um, you may be familiar with this, also under the name of the principle of immediate feedback. And I'm going to talk about what this means to us as developers today. In his uh, presentation this morning, uh, Johannathan uh, mentioned the word freak of interactivity, and I really like that phrase um, because I really think that interactive development is one of the most important things we can do to increase our productivity and also happiness as developers. Um, what is necessary to engage in interactive development? So first of all, uh, you need to be able to build up state incrementally um, you need to be able to make changes to the code and reload the changes um, without losing the state. Second, you need a way to get feedback. Uh, you should be trying to get feedback um, as much as possible and as quickly as possible. Uh, third, um, we are working with data. Data is basically at the uh, bottom, at the foundation of everything we're doing. So you need a good way to inspect your data. Interactive development is really important when you're building UIs, especially when you're building mobile UIs, because uh, it's very helpful to uh, experiment with styles. And if you have a quick feedback loop, that really helps um, creativity. And finally, um, we had a talk today about the topic of tooling matters, and I couldn't agree more with that idea. You need the tools uh, that help you engage in interactive development. And if you don't have those tools, then you should build them. Okay, just to give you a sense uh, of what I'm talking about. So this is a um, application I helped develop at a company called Fee. Uh, it's an e-commerce app, and you can see um, that you can browse products. Uh, it responds to scroll events. It uh, responds to gestures. It can have uh, rich um, elements, like videos. Uh, you can swipe. Um, it can have animations, and so on and so forth. So it basically um, behaves like a native application should. What is this matter for closure script? Well, this is also a quote you may be familiar with. Why are we doing this? Why are we building closure script? Because closure rocks and JavaScript reaches. Um, this is a quote from Rich Hickey's talk when 
he introduced the closure script project and i think it um, also applies to rqh today with react Native. um back then the richest project helped extend the reach of closure to the browser um, today react native helps extend the reach of closure script to alternative javascript runtimes so because ClojureScript just compiles to JavaScript, it can run on anything that has a JavaScript runtime. And that includes um, React Native, which is based on Apple's JavaScript core engine on both iOS and on, uh, and on Android. Okay, so React Native is a framework that uh, helps you build applications. You can use the same code base for both iOS and Android development. And it applies the lessons that we've learned uh, in building web applications to native app development. Um, it's called React Native because it's not just a web view. It really um, gives you the native components that users are used to um, with, in most cases, near native performance. It um, applies the browser model also in the sense that there's a single JavaScript thread that orchestrates and controls the whole application. So why closure script and not just use JavaScript? Well, I think I'm preaching to the choir here but I'm gonna mention three bullet points anyway. Um, Closure script is built with reloading uh, in mind from the beginning. So it is a really good environment to build applications that can be reloaded. Um, it helps you persist states and atoms across uh, changes to the code. It has a very good story about state management. Um, one example to mention is the reframe library, which codifies good practices uh, in dealing with state in a web application or a native application. Um, but even just Closure Script by itself, uh, with its atoms and uh, update semantics, um, is a very powerful tool. And finally, Closure Script is a community that cares deeply about interactive development. So you feel supported and you get a lot of support from the community if you're trying to um, live the dream. Cool, so as I mentioned, uh, the bulk of this talk is going to be a, a live demonstration. So what we're gonna do is to build a game uh, especially, uh, so in particular, we're going to build a um, tic-tac-toe game. So because I just restarted my computer, I have to check if everything still works. Let's hope it does. Okay, so I have to start the app now. As you can see on the right of the screen, there's um my simulator and on the left you see the emacs window uh, it's emacs but it could be any editor so i'm not making use of cider or anything like that it's not what i wanted okay, one second game My computer is working extra hard here. Okay, so you can see uh, basically an empty namespace. And in this namespace now I'm trying to um, build a tic-tac-toe, a very simple tic-tac-toe game. So as a reminder, tic-tac-toe is a game of two players, X and O, that um, alternate in making moves. And they are playing on a board of three by three 
Charles. Okay, as you can see, the React Native Packager is working extra hard here. Um, um, so we have to give it a couple of seconds to complete. So this is a red screen, but don't worry. Uh, everything is not lost because we can just reload. So this already shows one feature of React Native. An app basically works like a browser window. And when you reload uh, the app, uh, on the Mac you can just do a command R, it completely restarts the browser engine, uh, the JavaScript engine, sorry. Okay, so while it's loading, I'm going to start building. The first thing we want, aha, okay, now it's finished, and now it should be relatively fast. So as you can see, there's a view here, and this view is, uh, contains a text element uh, with a certain font size and some text. So let's start a cell. A cell is just a view. Views are in React Native what divs are for the browser. Okay, so we're gonna give, this, give it a style. I've prepared a couple of styles. And in the view, we're going to add a text with just the string x. And the text itself also needs to be styled. Let's do that. And here we're going to use that component. Okay, so I save the file and in true figure style, um, the changes get uploaded to the browser. Okay, now you can see there's a single cell. It looks a little bit strange, but you'll see why in a second. The next thing to do is to compose three cells into a row. So let's do that. It's already a style for row prepared. And I'm going to do the following. Click. And we want three. Actually, thinking about it, we'll just make a var out of it. And let's try that. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to wrap the whole thing in a board. And again, we need three elements. And we're going to map over a range of size again. And here I made a typo. And again, uh, you probably can't hear this, but I'm hearing the nice one warning message from um, boot running in the background uh, telling me that I made a typo. Okay, so the first achievement unlocked. You can see a board uh, with a lot of X's. Next thing to do would be a little bit of refactoring. Um, we want to be able to specify the content of the cell by passing it as a prop. As you can see, this works very similarly to how it works on the web. And this is powerful because it allows you to um, transfer the knowledge you have about um, building websites to um, building apps. Okay, let's try this. This should change the access into O's. Beautiful. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is introduce state. So I've already prepared a state item here. I can, you can see this is not, nothing magic. Um, I'm using reagent here. So I'm using a ratum, a reagent atom. Um, and this uh, starts out as empty. I've built a little introspection widget here. If you click here, uh, you can see the contents of the state atom 
at any given time. And as you can see, it's empty. Let's keep this open. Okay, so let's fill the cell depending on the content of the atom. So we want to get the state, the reference state, and get the value at the coordinates. So basically we want to store something like this in the atom. It's going to be a single map of uh, coordinate, coordinate pairs to values. Okay, um, so we want to pass this as the value. And now we expect this to empty the board, which it does, wonderful. Next up is being able to interact with the state. So what we really want is to be able to tap um, views of the screen. The equivalent of anchor tags of href uh, links in um, React Native is the touchable opacity um, component, which is just like a view, except that it uh, registers taps and calls an event handler when the user taps. So the magic is called on press here. I have to remember that it's on press and not on click because it's not the web. And we want to pass this here. What we want to do is actually change the state and source at this position a value. Use x here. So with a little bit of luck, this should mean that we can now paint here. So it looks like there's something wrong here. Let's investigate. But as you can see, the state gets updated properly but we don't actually see the value here. So why is that? Anyone have an idea? It does look like it should be working. It's probably a typo somewhere. So this will actually work fine. Let me go to my cheat sheet. It looks kind of similar to what we have here. Ah, now it works. Maybe it doesn't. Very interesting. Okay, let me do a quick change. I think I know what the problem is. So this is an oddity with a reagent. Something that I should have thought about. So let's replace this with This is not quite right. Okay, my uh, little guy in the headphones is telling me that there's a warning. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, now we can paint X's here. So one thing to note, I guess, is that a reagent has a couple of gotchas that can actually get you. Okay, so I propose the next thing to do, how are we on time? Um, is to, say again? Okay, sounds good.
to refactor this into a separate function. Um, so we want to have a function that takes x and y coordinates and changes the state. Yeah, so this is basically what we had before. Still working. Okay, next thing we want to do is have a reset button. That should be pretty straightforward. So we just add a, another view to uh, hold these two views and another view that will be a button. Actually, we want a touchable capacity uh, component. So they'll have an on-press uh, prop. So when you press, it should reset the state. No. And inside the touchable opacity component, there should be a text. I should say something like try again. And it has a style. And it should be the button text style. Let's see if that works. Okay, this looks like it moves something. It should actually also have a style. As you can see, it's sort of a interactive uh, relationship indeed. You saw that I made a mistake, um, and I could relatively easily identify where I made the mistake. And now I'm able to clear the board when I need to. OK, next thing I want to try is to make the players alternate. I'm going to claim that this is relatively easy to do in this reagent setup. Um, and it is easy because we can use this inspection tool to look at what the data looks like. So how would we determine in this uh, case who uh, is going to be up next? Well, one easy way to do that is just to count how many positions we have in the board. And if it's an odd number, uh, then uh, O is up. And if it's an even number, for example, uh, the initial move, um, X would be up. So let's just do that. That should be simple. So we take the count of the state. We count it. And then we check if it's odd is it should be x if it's not it's the other way around okay let's see if that works oh wait let's try again wonderful i'm just going to take a quick second to show you how the skype styles are implemented um, as you can see, um, I prepared a couple of styles for the different components on this screen. So that's, for example, the button. This is the try again button. And as you can see, all of this should look familiar to you if you have familiarity with CSS. The difference with styles on the web is that there are no style sheet files in React Native. Instead, there is just inline styles. So basically, all you do is specify styles using the style attribute. Um, and again, if you look at the attributes, they should be familiar. So there's a margin uh, attribute, there's padding. Um, we can easily change this interactively. So we can just make this a little bit smaller. And then the button moves. And we can go back. The one difference uh, between React Native and the web is what you can see here, namely that React Native always uses the Flexbox uh, layouting model. This is a newish uh, layouting model that um, in some ways is better than the original browser layouting model. Um, it's supported in modern browsers. Uh, React Native only supports like, the Flexbox model. Okay, so uh, to
push on with the game a little bit, the final piece of the puzzle that is missing is to be able to tell when a player has won the game. And in order to do that, I'm going to do a little bit of cheating because it's not so interesting. First thing I'm going to do is copy these functions over. Um, so these uh, basically define a set of uh, winning positions. And these are going to be the lines, horizontal and vertical, as well as the diagonals. So it's going to be three horizontal, three uh, vertical lines, and two diagonals. And the second piece, I, of course, I want to copy is this. Um, Um, and it uh, basically defines a function that checks if a certain player on the current board has won. So you pass it the state and you pass it the player x or y, and it either returns nil if the player has not won, or it, it returns the set of uh, coordinates when the player has won. Okay, um, we have a little bit of uh, styling to do to finish this. Um, just need to add a new attribute here because we want to change the color of the cell uh, depending on winning state. And we're just gonna add this to the text. So we associate, take the map and we associate the color to it. And let's try if this works. Again, interactively, let's make it green. Why not? Okay, looks good. Let's go back to white. Great, still working. Okay, and finally, we need to check if somebody has won. And that we do by calling the winning function based on the state. So we need to deal with the state and on the player. And we want to do this for both players. And let's slurp once. And then the final thing we need to do is we have to check if the current coordinate is in the set. So if the set contains this, so the win set contains the current uh, position. Then we want to make this red for effect and clearing the board, and otherwise um, it should be white. Okay, let's wait for the Emacs gods to uh, reload, and let's see if this works. Ta-ta! That looks like O1. So that's pretty much the end of uh, my uh, demo. Uh, it worked relatively well. Um, here's a couple of things I want to summarize. Um, it really helps to get immediate feedback. Um, it helps you to discover bugs. You saw that I made a mistake, and then uh, I was able to uh, find the bug and solve the problem um, without even restarting the application. It also helps for experimentation. And that's one thing I want to show you before I leave you. What if we want to just uh, play the game on a four by four board instead of a three by three board? Let's try this. And as you can see, it all adapts relatively well. You can still play and you can still um, determine if a player has won or not. So the techniques I've showed you today really help you um, not just to find bugs, but also to make um, improvements to your program and to discover something, learn something about your program that you didn't understand before. Uh, have, Tools Meta was mentioned today. You have one question, um, by the way. Okay, um, 
Yeah, and the final thing I wanted to uh, mention before um, you uh, you can ask questions is um, that this is something you can try out nowadays, these days. It's relatively simple to get set up. Uh, one thing to note is that if you want to build an iOS application, you do need to use Mac OS X um, because otherwise the simulator is not going to run. I'm going to uh, share a couple of um, links with you uh, after the questions um, so you can um, try yourself and see if you like this. Um, also, the code to this um, demo is available on GitHub. I'm also going to show uh, share the link with this. And that's about it. Are there any questions? Well, not the link okay. So Chris Charles is asking, have you used this with Android? Is it different? Um, I have used this with Android. Um, React Native started out uh, a year and a half ago or so um, with only iOS support. And they added Android support um, after half a year. And everybody was very impressed by the fact that they were able to add this so quickly. Um, it has feature parity. Um, it works really well on Android as well. Um, it's not quite as polished on Android. So there are subtle differences between the two platforms. Um, but that's just something you would expect um, because Android and iOS just are not the same platforms. So you'll have to do some special casing here and there. Sometimes you have to use, when you're using native components or you're using third party APIs, um, you'll have to um, add custom code. Uh, for both platforms. But there are reports of people who use uh, the same code base for both um, platforms. Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, so the question is, what are the build processes for making an IPA or an APK to upload to iTunes Connect or Google Play? Okay, so I didn't talk about this too much uh, in the presentation. The tool I've been using is called Boot React Native. Uh, you can, uh, you can, um, I also post a link to the project. I'm one of the maintainers of this project. Um, and it's uh, also, it also includes a task for creating a JavaScript bundle uh, that you can use uh, to ship uh, with an iOS bundle, just like you used to. So at this point, the way it works is not particularly different from React Native in general. The most striking differences between JavaScript and ClojureScript are in the development process. But when you're run, building a production bundle, um, you're usually um, following the same process. One thing to note is that the React Native packager sometimes has problems uh, dealing with the large uh, JavaScript files produced by the Google Clojure compiler. Um, sometimes it's run, it runs out of memory and uh, similar problems uh, can arise. Um, uh, in my experience, uh, you can usually get around those by turning off optimizations in the React uh, native packager. Um, and I haven't had the experience that it affects the performance too much. Any other questions? That looks like it. I'm going to head off for a quick break here, and then we'll see you folks in the panel in about eight minutes. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks very much for the presentation. Great demo. Bye.